Hey guys, Bart from TST Industries here. Welcome to TST Garage. As you can see, I have a brand new 2024 Kawasaki KLX 300 in the shop with me. In the recent years, we've been transitioning from just sport bike technology to dual sport and supermoto technology as well. This is part of that project. We've done um, DRZs, we've done CRF 300 and 250s. We've done the predecessor to this model, the 250, and now the new one's out and we are ready to go. Straight out the gate, we're gonna start working on the tail end of this bike. We do have this large fender assembly and an unrefined red tail light, along with these pumpkin style signals. What we're gonna do in this video is demonstrate the installation of our new fender eliminator for this bike. The fender eliminator is a combination kit of fender removal components, means of mounting your license plate, and then an integrated tail light that has the running, brake, and signal function already integrated into it. What you see here in my hands is the smoked version of the tail light. It is very lightly tinted. The rest of the muting of the look of this is done via a black circuit board. So you can rest assured that this, even though it's smoked, it does have ample light output. If you do prefer a clear version, we do offer that as well. The choice is really yours. In the product page for this product kit, you will be presented with the option of choosing smoked or clear. So that's your choice right there. As you can see here, we do have our own proprietary plug on this component for this vehicle. We do have a vehicle specific harness. You plug it through and then boom, you're able to plug right into the harness with OEM style connectors, no big deal. The actual physical installation of all these kits, the first, the build, and then the installation is very, very simple. It just takes regular tools that you probably have in your toolbox or possibly in the toolkit of this bike. So no sweat there. We provide all of the mounting, the extra mounting components that you may need in this installation flow. We do not include a license plate light by default in our fender eliminators because some people like uh, the license plate light bolts. Some people like a different solution. So we don't upcharge and shove this down your throat. This is an optional kit. It is available for purchase. It does not cost a lot of money. In this video, I will be showing how to install our license plate light. Just be aware that if you want a license plate light with your kit, during the purchasing of this kit, you have to drop that in your cart. We are talking about an integrated tail light here. It does have signals built in. The OEM signals have incandescent light bulbs in them. They draw much more current than LED type signals. So whether you choose an integrated tail light with front LED signals or standard signals up front, you may experience a flash symptom that we call hyper flash. It flashes much faster than the OEM's 85 cycle per minute rate. Some of these bikes get stuck in on or off mode. So if you do experience any of those symptoms, we do sell a flasher relay that combats all of that. It's a plug and play component. We do have a separate installation video showing you how to install that, but it's essentially plug and play. And it's below the panel on the left-hand side of the bike. So during this installation flow, we will show how, what the symptom is on this particular bike after installing one set of LED signals in the rear and then if we do have a bad symptom, we will correct it with this, uh, with this product. Now, if an integrated tail light with signals only in the capsule is not enough for your needs, we do have a Y splitter system that takes one input into the harness of the bike and splits it into two outputs. So then you could connect your integrated signal, in, integrated tail light along with a separate set of signals like I have configured here, you can actually plug those through into the Y splitter and have dual signals in the taillight capsule and outboard. All of those components are available for purchase on our website, tscindustries.com. We make it very easy. All the write-ups are very, very explicit. So you can get all the information there. If you have any more questions, our customer support guys, they're ready to help you out. One last thing before we start building stuff. Here I'm holding uh, an upgraded version of the fender eliminator. The basic kit comes with this, that sandwiches in, be in between the taillight and 
the carrier bracket that mounts everything to the bike. This is a static component. It's made of stainless steel, powder coated black, meant to disappear behind the license plate, but it is static. Only one angle is available for the license plate hanging. So if you'd like a nice upgraded version where you can rotate the hinge, subsequently tighten it down once you've chosen the angle, this will enable you to choose the angle that your license plate hangs on and it gives you an extra layer of adjustability. It's also made of slightly nicer materials. This is all CNC machined aluminum. It is brushed on the face here. It is anodized black. It really looks the biz. I like it better than the static version, but it is a, a little bit more expensive. So evaluate uh, all the options on our website and then give it a shot. All right, let's start talking about building some components into a chunk and then we'll get on the bike, disassemble it, mount the pre-assembled chunk and then reassemble, we'll be good to go. At this point, I'm going to pre-configure the first chunk that we will need to transfer to the bike. For that purpose, I will push aside the parts that are not necessary at this stage. And I'll briefly talk about how this is configured. This is the carrier bracket that holds everything onto the bike. It does have a split in it for the purpose of passing our grommet through. The license plate bracket also has that split. It does need to align like so. This does get sandwiched in here. So we will get the license plate bracket on first, then get our carrier bracket on, flip this assembly over, grab one of the plastide screws, and let's start forming the threads in the first hole here. These plastide screws are specifically made for fastening into thermoplastics. The enclosure of this taillight is made of ABS plastic. It is specifically designed to accept these screws, but care has to be exercised in order to do this step properly. I'm using a number two Phillips screwdriver for this step. As you turn in the screws, you form the thread. The thread formed onto these screws is trilobular. It's sort of uh, triangular in profile. This bites into the plastic and ensures that the thread locks itself into the material that receives it and vibrations that are very present on these dual sport bikes do not extract that screw. We've used this in many, many applications and it works really, really well. You just need to make sure you do not over tighten them. So I will get close to bottom here. And then on this particular light, I like to grasp the carrier bracket and push it upwards, push the light downward. These screw locations do have slots, so there is some adjustability. And then this bracket will also move. So I would just pull the license plate bracket all the way down, the light all the way down, and then the carrier bracket all the way up. And then I will finish tightening down on all these fasteners. Once you hit bottom, which means there is some resistance to rotation, you give it another two, three degrees and that locks it in place. Do not exceed that. Do not want to strain the new threads you just formed into the tail light. Now I'm gonna undo the harness here. Do send these with a little twisty tie. Once you remove that, it stretches out. And finally, get our sub harness on. You need to press this in until you see this little window click with the ratchet detent in there. Give it a little tug. This is good to go. Now we're ready to jump on the bike, start disassembling some of the components and get this mounted on. First step of the disassembly will consist of removing your license plate and holding on to the hardware that fixes your license plate onto its bracket. And we'll be reusing whatever is on your bike currently. 
Next, we are going to grab an eight millimeter socket, remove these two fasteners from this panel, and that'll enable us to remove the panel. Once the panel is loose, there are several clip type fasteners up here with one friction fastener going into a grommet. So the sequence is get these tabs out first, past the seat, and then pry outboard right about here. Once that clears out, pull it towards the rear. This is the friction fastener, it goes into a grommet, and there's a clip that goes in there, also a tab that mounts into a slot here. So the sequence is, again, get these tabs out, pry out this friction fastener, clear this tab, and then clear this slot off the tab. We will repeat the exact procedure on the left side of the bike. Now it'll be time to take the seat off. The remaining fastener for the seat is whatever holds the strap on. That is an eight millimeter head also. Now the strap comes off and this seat will swoop back and towards the, the top. Clear these tabs off the frame tabs first and then there is captive geometry slide lock here and also here. They need to be withdrawn in a swooping action. For the next step, we'll need access into here. Let's unzip it. We'll undo the straps from the toolkit and then remove the toolkit. Under here, we expose these four fasteners. These two can stay. These need to come out. That's an eight millimeter socket head does shed a nut from the bottom side. So we'll need to hang onto it. Okay, now that's loose. So the rear section of the tail is loose. And get all this stuff back in here. We need to remove these two eight millimeter head fasteners. At this point, we will be removing the entire tail fairing upwards right about here, there are, and it's more like here. We do have two friction fasteners that are received into grommets. So I need to pry that up and then this is easy to take off. Here are the receiving grommets. These are the friction fasteners. All right, we will bring that to the side. Additionally, we wanna take these components off for the moment so that they don't travel on us. I'm gonna group up my fasteners so there's no guesswork later. Now we have access here. We have all of the fender lighting equipment connected here. Let's go ahead and drop these connections. The signals operate via pressing down on this locking element that unlocks the detent. These MTW Sumitomo connectors have this sort of a lock, you press it down and withdraw it. Okay, that's all loose and ready to go. Now, to remove the actual fender assembly at this point, we have two 10 millimeter head fasteners here, along with their sleeve washers. Those will have to come out. And then there are four Phillips head um, thermoplastic screws that hold the inner and outer fender together. Those also have to come apart. Let's remove these two. These fasteners will be reused with our new components. These sleeves will be replaced by the black plastic ones that we've provided in the kit. Let's grab a Phillips head screwdriver and jump under and remove the other four screws I mentioned before. Once I get to the end of the last screw here, I'm going to make sure that I support both of these components by hand. Don't want anything to just drop off the bike. They are now separate. 
and we have the wiring undone. So now I will be passing all the connectors and harnesses under this frame component. Sometimes I need a little help by flexing this down to make space. And boom, there we go. This comes off. And now we have to talk about a couple of things here. We have our coolant overflow hose. This usually lives in here. And if there is an overflow condition, it does dump into the fender and it dis disperses it. So we will have to figure out towards the end of this installation how to hook this up in a way that it doesn't go all over the tire, all over the passenger, all over everywhere. So we'll get to that a little bit later. We will need to trim this piece here. This is not a two piece component from the factory. We can either do it on the bike or take two screws from within here and that just comes off. It's pretty easy if that's easier. Uh, we will figure it out during the flow. We will need to trim some of this off here to drop off the actual fender. This is a $50 part, around about $50 from uh, suppliers. So if you ever need to go back, just know that this is not a permanent modification. It'll just cost you 50 bucks to replace this. All right, one more thing. We do supply these dip molded caps for the end of the frame. If we were to not cap these off, now you have gaping holes in the back here, right in line with where dirt and mud and water may get kicked up. And then that may travel forward in the frame, start rusting it from the inside. We don't want that. So we will be capping these here. I'll do that a little bit later. Let's get our strategy down for the actual trim job. What I like to do here is get right across, right in line with this flat here. So let me simulate this, simulate my cut with my blue tape. The exact part here I'm pointing to is where this sub tray has a draining swoop geometry here. Right at the bottom of that, there is a flat that meets this surface. That's where I'm gonna intersect and cut. My cut will be parallel with, the, with this line that I just described between those two surfaces. And then basically just wrapping around the side of this component to take away all of this part of this fender. I'm gonna attempt to merge cleanly from this line to where this geometry meets the upright geometry. What I'm gonna do is mark it off really well for myself and then we're gonna take a close up and show you guys the detail. This part is symmetric, so left and right side is gonna look the same. We need to perform the same cut. Tools of choice, obviously if you have a Dremel with a disc cutter, that is probably the easiest thing to use. But if you don't have that type of a tool, polypropylene plastic cuts really, really nicely with a nice sharp blade. I just changed this blade. I will attempt to just use that, scoring it over and over and over until I go through in a corner and then propagate that throughout. That is very uninvasive. You don't have a spinning part. You don't have to take this part down. I do like minimally invasive procedures. So that is what I will attempt to do here. You guys follow along. If you like this method, I do think that this is a superior method to whipping out bigger tools. to a clean cut using a knife is to not over demand 
cutting or cutting speed, if you take your time and do it very, very slowly, move the knife back and forth, let, it, let the blade actually do the cut, you end up with this frill-free edge. And if you want to refine that edge, it's very easy to do that with a file. Actually doesn't need too much refinement, but I'm gonna go for excellent. If any frills form, it can be scraped off like this. With the cut behind us and this sub tray ready to go, we will focus on mounting our pre-built chunk in here. To do that, I did mention during the disassembly that the screws and sleeves that come out of here, we reuse the screw, but we drop the sleeve in favor of the new replacement sleeve, which is black, that comes in our hardware kit. So what we're gonna do for now is insert the sleeves in there. I'm gonna use these grommets as holding spot for my screws. Now let's get our wiring through in between here. It's basically the same routing as OEM. I may need to flex this down to make space. All right, now as this passes through, we will get these holes inserted over the head of this grommet protruding through the bottom, and these holes will be concentric with our inserts and screws. So I'm gonna to try to get that located without lifting my inserts, my sleeves, get the screws dropped through, and then I'm gonna lift up on that sub tray until I can engage those threads. Okay, I will hand tighten this, bottom it out. Now this entire assembly still has some adjustability in it, right? So we need to ensure that we are center, not off axis. The way I like to do that is basically take this component after everything's been kind of just tightened down and there is some holding power on it, I'll pull it backwards and it'll locate itself parallel with the center plane of the bike and back as far as it can go. Then we grab a 10 millimeter socket and we will start cinching down on these two screws here going through the sleeves. All right, once we see compression marks on the plastic sleeves, we leave it alone, we do not want to squish those beyond that point. The actual preload in these nylon sleeves is what's going to keep the screws from vibrating out. If you deform that sleeve too much, you will likely break it. All right, we are mounted here. If you are running a license plate light with your setup, and most people do, we will now need to take care of routing it and installing it, if you wait till after this point, it becomes a little too difficult with all components around it, so let's grab that now. This is very simple in this step. We will not be wiring anything just yet. Right now we're just routing it. We universalize our license plate lights so that they can be used on TST Industries setups and other setups. There's no fastening feature you can either clamp it in between your license plate and the license plate bracket, or if that still moves around on you, it really depends on how much vibration you're experiencing. If that still moves around, you could strip off this red masking and then adhere the whole license plate light to the backside of your license plate and then sandwich it. Choice is yours. I typically just clamp them and grab my wire and go through the middle triangle here, and that will come up through the top, I could grab it and get that slack milked out. Be gentle, 
it's not strain anything. All right, so that's in position and we'll take care of wiring it a little bit later. Now, we did provide you guys with these caps for these tubes. Let's get those on here, press them in as far as they'll go. All right, that's good to go. Now we can hop up top and take care of the wiring. So like I mentioned in our intro, everything's plug and play here. Find the three conductor plug to accept the three conductor connector on our tail light. And then we do have to go brown to black, I believe, by memory. Let me just test that real quick. Yup, brown to black, green to gray, G to G, B to B. And now it's a game of bulk distribution. So this connector sits really nicely here. I believe we will have enough clearance between the tail component and here. So I will distribute all of my wire bulk right up in here. Just making sure that I don't have this, I don't have anything under this connector so that it could lay flat. So that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna quickly test all the functions, running light, brake light, left signal, right signal. As you can see, I am flashing kind of fast here. This was the fast flash or hyper flash I was talking about. If you are replacing the relay at the same time and don't want to take a look at a separate video, this is the relay here. It'll just replace this OEM one. For now, let's just complete this job. We still have to connect our license plate light. This is our license plate light connection here. You can either clip off a portion of the OEM connection from the OEM tail light wire it to here, and then you have this plug and play, or you can use the connectors that were provided with the license plate light kit to just tap right into here. These are PosiTap connectors. They're very easy to use, they're toolless. So I'm going to use this means. The insulation here is just a tad too long for me. I am going to take that off. We need to strip back on this just a little bit. Make sure not to harm any of the wires. Okay, now we have ample space here. The red will be the positive, connecting into the TST Industries red lead. Our black lead here will connect to the black with yellow trace. The way these connectors work, there are two caps, one smaller diameter, one is larger diameter. Let's take off the larger one. That does have a slit in it that passes around the wire that we are going to be connecting into. And then the top portion does have a piercing element that goes through the insulation of that wire, makes our connection. And then we take off the smaller diameter cap. Obviously one side is threaded. We will take the appropriate wire we're connecting into this system, pass it through the non-threaded portion have it protrude past the threaded portion and get that threaded up into the previously set posi tap. I maintain positive pressure on the wire as I turn that little cap that, make, that ensures a positive connection and also holding power. I give it a little tug test. That one's good to go. I'm gonna repeat the procedure here with the second one. I like to stagger these so that they don't bunch up on me. All right, this is connected. I'm gonna test the connection, make sure it's good. And in fact, we do have a license plate light active now. Place this back in here for cable management. Then I'm gonna route these wires here upstream can technically shorten them. But I find that to be extra effort for no extra benefit. So I'm just gonna wrap these around here, make sure that they're out of the way. 
tuck them away. Now they're neatly distributed. This is ready to go. I'm gonna make sure that my hose is right about here. I'm gonna grab the tail component, bring it back into view. I'm gonna to want to align these friction fasteners with the grommets here. We will need these double-sided inserts in this position and this position here. I'll line those up and then just need to make sure that the screws that are going through the bag area actually penetrate to the bottom and they have. And now I just press down on those grommet areas and now it's all locked together, good to go. Let's go ahead and set these screws in here. Start the thread. And take these nuts that came off here. Thread them on underneath. So the nuts are 10 millimeter and the screw heads are eight. Going to use the appropriate tools to get those fastened together. Just make sure my alignment is good here while I still have some adjustability. Eight socket on top, 10 on the bottom. At this point, we still have to deal with the hose here, but I want to bring our license plate into view so that I could let you guys know exactly what we're doing here. This hose is connected to the overflow catch can for your cooling system. In the case where the fluid gets hot in the radiator, it goes into the catch can. When it cools down, it goes back into the cooling system. In the rare event of blowing a motor or you have too much coolant in the catch can, it will start coming out of here. In the original setup, we had this encapsulated in, in between the two fender components. When this ejects fluid, it would just go all over the place. Some of it would get on the tire. That's not very good. This stuff is very slippery. It's propylene glycol or ethylene glycol, and it's really, really slippery stuff. You don't want that on your tire. So in addition, this fluid does exit hot, so you don't want it on the back of the rider or the passenger. Our best scenario would be to pass it down and then off to the side. And that's what we've done on the 250 version and the previous generation of the 300 of these bikes. So, we have the opportunity to tie this tube off to this member here with the provided cable ties. And then at the bottom here, we could also attach to the bottom of the license plate and I will slice cut it so that it, if it does exit, it exits to the side and gives us the best chance of dodging all of the fluid come out. So let's grab us a cable tie. We've provided you with three, two larger ones, one smaller. Typically I use the smaller one to cinch down the license plate light wire to something. Uh, for this, I will leave it unused. I will just use the larger ones. They have a little bit wider sections, providing a better grip. I will cinch it down, but leave some adjustability. The actual ratchet head I like to have on the underside so that when we place our license plate on here, it doesn't prevent it from sitting flush. All right, we're good here. Let's grab our license plate holding hardware that we removed in the first step. I'm gonna reuse this. If for some reason your bike does not have hardware, didn't come with hardware, you can always pick some up. When you're picking up these parts, we have several different types. We have these reflective guys here, and we also have these nice aluminum anodized washer sets. 
Check that out on tstindustries.com. I'm going to get this plate in the appropriate position for me. I generally do these installation instructions with the standard version of the fender eliminator. If you did purchase the adjustable one, we do have a separate flow. The video for that upgrade is within the product page for that part. So you can look for that there. All right, like I said, I am gonna trim this so it's hidden beneath the license plate. Okay, so now it'll be hidden and it's slash cut in a way that if fluid were to come out, it'll exit to the side. And now I'm just gonna get my zip tie around it like so. looks pretty neat. If you prefer to have a smaller zip tie in this place for less visibility, that's cool. We've supplied that to you. I'm gonna cut off the excess. Cinch down on the top one a little bit. Be careful when you cinch down on the zip ties holding the tube. Don't collapse the tube. You definitely want the flow to be able to go through the tube itself. All right, that's good to go. I promised that I would show you guys regular flash with the standard flasher relay. As you can see, it is much faster than the 85 cycle per minute rate that these things are supposed to blink at. The flash rate being faster will not damage any of the electronics. That's not a problem. It just flashes so fast it may be confusing to drivers around you. So what I'm gonna do here really quick is unplug the OEM, plug in our Gen 2F relay, Boom, flash rate restored. Now, I'm anticipating that when I change the front signals to LED, the OEM flasher flash rate would be even faster. And with our Gen 2F, it doesn't matter what sort of signal combination you have, no matter what it is, it's whatever the rate is set to. So 85 cycles per minute when it arrives to you, and you can actually alter that if you want to know more about that, please see the video for that product. All right, that's pretty much it here. I'm just gonna go in the reverse order of disassembly from this point forward. Let's start with the seat. guys that's pretty much it this job's complete the bike's ready to go give her one more test running light active license plate light active brake light working right signal left signal good to go in just a couple moments we transformed this bike from the boring factory look to this race inspired aftermarket setup i really love these setups they really make the bike look really the biz. So if you like what you see here, check out tstindustries.com. We have these parts ready to go, ready to ship to you. We also have other parts for other bikes you may have in your stable. So check us out. I also like comments, so please write me a comment. Let me know what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong. That's how we polish these videos and make them better for you guys out there. Thanks for watching, tstindustries.com. See you later.